Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, NPTEL phase 2 course on uh, groundwater hydrology, which is being developed by me, Dr. V. R. Desai, uh, and my colleague, uh, Dr. Anir Bandhar, both from the Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Khadakpur. Uh, first, let us start with this uh, uh, lecture number 1 in uh, module number 1 on introduction. So, here we will uh, start with the the basic uh, the meaning of uh, the word ground water and how it has evolved which I would like to abbreviate as uh, GW. So, this is the ground water is the water available below the ground surface in soil or uh, rock pores, also known as, it is also known as subsurface water for the simple reason that it is available below the ground. And uh, we all know that for uh, to sustain life, water is the second most important uh, requirement next only to air and it comes even before the food. So, uh, water is, is used for various purposes right from the drinking and cooking as well as other purposes and the water required for this drinking and cooking is known as fresh water. Fresh water is the purest form of water used for drinking, cooking. The human dependence on uh, water, on fresh water, water in general and fresh water in particular, it starts with the rain water or else surface water else or else ground water or else desalinated water or else other fresh water. So, here I would like to mention that the rain water as and when it is available okay, and we know that the duration of rainfall is very limited as well as many times the spatial extent of rainfall is also quite limited. So, if the rain water is stored can be stored in the appropriate containers before it gets uh, polluted or contaminated with other impurities in the atmosphere or on the ground surface. Okay 
that will serve as the best uh, purpose because it has undergone the natural process of purification through this evaporation and uh, subsequent condensation. So, and because of the spatial and temporal limitation of rainwater, so our uh, uh, the human dependence. If rainwater is not available, then we have to mean we have to sustain our life, not only for uh, this uh, human beings, so you are also for our uh, flora and fauna the plants and animals. So, they also need to sustain their life. So, therefore, the dependence moves on to surface water. So, here the uh, this water may be available in any surface water body, may be a river or a, reser a reservoir or a small size reservoir like such as a tank or a pond or uh, even a natural reservoir like a lake. Okay. So, all these are uh, one. And it also the surface water may also be available in the form of uh, say this mountain ice caps. Next, if that is also not available, then obviously the human intelligence uh, tries to explore water by uh, that is uh, digging below the ground and then getting uh, uh, this one uh, hoping for and men and uh, most of the time succeeding in getting uh, ground water, which is uh, generally available in wells and other uh, subsurface structures. If that is also not available, that means, when rain water is not available, surface water is not available, ground water is not available, but the area is close to say uh, a sea or any other uh, source of large source of uh, marine water. So, then we may go for uh, say desalinated uh, water. So, this desalination is essentially the artificial process of evaporation and then creating uh, a, uh, one, uh, artificially fresh water. And if that is also not available, we may go for other sources of water such as uh, uh, fog water or uh, even uh, mist or uh, any other uh, one, any, any other form of uh, fresh water. Okay, so, therefore, and as you can see, so this, uh, this uh, ground water here it lies uh, it is it is next only to rain water and surface water so therefore it provides a necessary that is uh, water security spatially and uh, temporally and because it provides this uh, water security so it is very important to sustain life and uh, many times it has been proved that uh, so this uh, ground water extraction has been proved to be easy and feasible technically and and uh, economically so this groundwater provides the necessary water security for uh, fresh water in particular spatially and temporally. Therefore, the extraction of uh, ground water or rather the harnessing of ground water is very important. Now, let us go to the next item of this uh, lecture that is the, the ground water utilization and historical background. So, coming to this groundwater utilization, 
I have already mentioned in the introduction that how important groundwater is to provide uh, spatio temporal uh, security, water security. And uh, this one in this uh, groundwater utilization, so this groundwater utilization is uh, it is uh, uh, done in the developed as well as developing world. In the developed world as well as uh, in the developed nations as well as developing nations. So, the there has been significant amount of utilization of groundwater because for the simple reason that it is providing additional water security. So, now let us let me give an example of uh, say this uh, an example from the developing developed world and also an example from the developing world. So, this is uh, for example, in USA in 1975 in USA, there were at least not less than 10 states wherein groundwater use divided by total water use was greater than 50 percent. So, because I am uh, using the word not at least because I, I got the S1, uh, uh, the data only for uh, say 45 out of 50, 50 states that is why I am using this uh, word. And uh, added to this there were uh, additionally there were not less than say 9 more states, 9 states wherein this is ground water use divided by total water use, it was uh, between 40 and 50 percent. So, you can say nearly say at least say 20 percent of uh, the no 40 percent of the U uh, the states in the US ok. So, depended uh, significantly on uh, ground water for their uh, uh, for carrying out their uh, activities various activities. Now, and uh, now let me provide an example from uh, India the recent uh, one say in India during 2004 so the groundwater development that is a development stage ok. That is the ground water extracted divided by ground water available. So, this was more than 100 percent in uh, three states of Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan. Of course, this is not a healthy sign, but still you can uh, realize the importance of ground water. And uh, we know that uh, Punjab and Haryana are uh, known as the uh, the agricultural powerhouses in India. So, you can imagine the importance of ground water. And likewise, so in the uh, the 
National Capital Territory of Delhi also had a, a ground water stage of ground water development of uh, more than 100 percent. And uh, during the same year, so there were uh, five more states that is Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, wherein the ground water, uh, the stage of ground water development was between 50 and 100 percent. And uh, so, this was also the case of uh, Lakshadweep, the Union Territory of Lakshadweep. And uh, of course, I forgot to add here. So, that is uh, uh, three states of uh, Punjab and two Union Territories that is uh, UTs of uh, Pondicherry comma Diu and Daman DD. Okay, so, this is PY for Pondicherry and DD for Diu and Daman. Likewise, so this is uh, between 50 and 100 percent the Union Territory of uh, Lakshadweep had as one. So, like uh, as you can say, uh, so let me present this in a tabular form. So, that is uh, India 2004, that is a uh, stage of ground water development So, let me present this in a scale here. So, this is 0 and here say 40 percent. So, this is all uh, in percentage and uh, say this is uh, 50 percent and then this is say 100 percent. So, here above 100 percent we had this is uh, we had the states of uh, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and the national capital territory of uh, Delhi. And between this 50 and 100 percent, we had uh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and uh, Lakshadweep. Okay, so, these uh, five states and uh, one union territory. Between 40 and uh, 50 percent, so there were few more states of uh, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, then uh, there was uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, West Bengal. So, you can imagine the the importance of ground water utilization. So, here you can see that is uh, say this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then say 10. So, at least 13 states which uh, which covering almost uh, more than uh, 50 percent of the physical area 50 to 60 percent of the physical area of uh, India. So, they developed they were dependent on uh, ground water for significantly. So, this explains the importance of uh, the ground water utilization in uh, the developed world for example, the USA as well as the developing world such as uh, India. So, now let us come to the historical development of uh, ground water in the historical background. And we know that the one of the oldest uh, river valley civilizations, the Indus valley civilization. So, that time there have been records of uh, ground water wells uh, that is uh, they were essentially open, uh, open wells used for uh, irrigation or uh, even uh, municipal purpose also. And uh, also the Old Testament, it contains uh, a number of uh, references regarding ground water, springs and uh, wells. So, around the same period in India, 
So, during the Mauryan Empire and we know that uh, the Ashokan, the Mauryan Empire under uh, Emperor Ashoka, it uh, extended all the way from the present Afghanistan to, so in the eastern India, uh, close to West Bengal and even um, Assam and all. So, there the, there were, there are uh, records of uh, uh, groundwater wells supporting irrigation and even, uh, so there were many wells were uh, uh, constructed, so as to facilitate the, the travelers. So, the, during those days, so there were not many communication facilities and so, and these uh, this one, so there were uh, many uh, this one. Okay, so the uh, that means uh, uh, so this is historically one. Of course, I uh, like to show you here that is uh, the same thing. That is uh, before uh, moving back to this one, I would like to show you here the the which I mentioned here, the, the state wise groundwater resource availability utilization and all. As you can see here, let me, highlight the ones with uh, more than 100 percent and uh, similarly, Punjab and Rajasthan more than 100 percent, Indian say so this is uh, Haryana, more than uh, 100 percent. And I am sorry, it is uh, not very visible, it is uh, because uh, it is a too big a table. So, like that, uh, this one. Okay, let me also share with you the the replenishable groundwater resources in India. As you can see here, in the states of uh, Punjab, this is uh, Haryana, Delhi, then uh, almost in uh, Rajasthan also. So it's, uh, so, here there is a significant amount of uh, the groundwater utilization. Added to that is the, the states of uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and uh, say West Bengal. Uttar Pradesh. Of course, here it also, uh, this is an old map of uh, India with, uh, so therefore, it does not show that the uh, new states of uh, Uttarakhand, which is carved out of Uttar Pradesh and uh, Chhattisgarh, which is carved out of uh, Madhya Pradesh and uh, Jharkhand, which is carved out of uh, this one. So, as you can see here, a significant area, of course, Andhra Pradesh also. So, in all these states, the that is uh, the stage of groundwater development is at least 40 percent. So, you can imagine the importance of uh, groundwater. So, now let us come to, let us uh, come to that historical background. So, here during uh, Indus Valley Civilization, there are uh, reports of uh,
ground water use through open wells. So, this is at least 5000 years ago. Similarly, so in Old Testament, there are uh, references to ground water, springs, and uh, wells. Around the same time in India, so there are, there are uh, mention references of references to ground water wells supporting irrigation during uh, Mauryan empire. So, that is uh, 4th and uh, third century BC. So, like this we can uh, say how important is ground water which was realized by uh, human beings in this uh, one. And also now let me also bring it to you a uh, very interesting technology of uh, horizontal wells. So, we are under a impression that, so this ground water wells are essentially vertical wells, it is not exactly so. There are many examples of horizontal wells and uh, these horizontal wells are supposed to, uh, it has been proved that these horizontal wells have a even greater yield than the, the vertical ground water wells. And uh, in this regard, I would like to mention you, mention to you the about uh, canards, which are the horizontal wells, which were uh, found in, uh, which were initially developed in say Iran. So, this is a typical uh, canard and as you can see here in this uh, this is a horizontal well. So, this is this essentially is the canard and the, this uh, the deepest well is known as the mother well and so this is the water intake area. So, basically this is a hilly area or a mountainous area where there is a uh, significant amount of uh, rainfall and uh, this mother well has a depth of uh, around uh, 50 meters or less than that and there have been examples of mother wells which are even as deep as say 100 meters and uh, one mother well has been uh, reported to be around uh, say 250 meters deep also. And then so here, so the unlike the mountain slope which may be very steep, so this uh, the bed slope of this canard which is essentially a horizontal well, horizontal and mild sloping well. So, this is the the slope direction. So, this is a very mild slope and uh, uh, it reaches the ground and once it reaches ground, so for a significant portion there is a surface canal and through the surface canal the water is conveyed to the farmlands on the or irrigated land. And in between the mother well and this surface canal, so there are a number of uh, these uh, shafts okay. and so this is the conduit of the, of the canard which is a, which forms the horizontal well. And so, these number of shafts 
are the one which provide access to this uh, drilling this canal. And uh, so, this canal, this uh, canard, so this canard was uh, uh, the technology of drilling this canard, wherein this uh, water from the aquifer was uh, brought in through the mild sloping uh, horizontal, uh, almost horizontal conduit of the canard in uh, to the surface canal and then on to the farmland. Okay. So, this was uh, very much perfected by people in uh, Iran almost uh, say 3000 years back. And uh, here, so the length of the canal, cannot I am sorry, was uh, of the order of say 5 to 30 kilometers. Most of the canards are existing even now and uh, so they there are, it has been reported that there are at least 22,000 canards existing in Iran even now and uh, which will supply at least which are supplying at least 35 percent of the entire uh, water requirement in Iran. Okay. So, here I would like to mention here. So, that is how important is uh, the ground water essentially. So, this is a horizontal uh, well a technology which was very much perfected in Iran and from there it went moved on to this uh, Morocco and uh, this uh, other uh, North African uh, con uh, this continental uh, continental regions and then it moved as uh, far as uh, Spain in Europe. So, like this, so the uh, this uh, the extraction of the historically this ground water has been extracted not only through uh, this uh, uh, the, the vertical wells, also through the horizontal wells. And now, let me bring it to you. So, this is uh, the, you must have heard of the artesian well. And uh, here, so in this artesian well, it is basically, it was uh, developed initially somewhere in France in a place called Artois. And uh, in this case, this is basically a, a basically a pressurized well. So, here we have the uh, that is a uh, free water table is somewhere here. And then uh, in this region, where the ground surface is below the, uh, the, the free water table. So, there the water is under pressure. Okay, and uh, here, if uh, we make a, if we puncture this one, then the water will gush out of this artesian well, and uh, uh, so it will, uh, okay, will uh, give out uh, uh, water in the form of a natural fountain. So this region, wherein the ground level is below the the water table. Okay, so, that is uh, known as the region of uh, uh, artesian water, where there is a raised water table. And uh, so, if, a, if we puncture this artesian aquifer, so there will be a huge amount of, we can uh, get a lot of uh, water. So, these uh, artesian wells also were uh, developed sometime in the middle of uh, this one. And, uh, added to this is the, so in the, in uh, 1804, so there was a, an instance of uh, the first deep tube well, which was uh, dug in and around Calcutta. And uh, so, it had a depth of 500 meters. And so, this uh, tube well uh, was the the you can say is the major uh, uh, this one uh, uh, it uh, it indicates a major milestone in uh, this groundwater harnessing or development. Likewise, in 1936, so this Ganga Valley State Tubal Irrigation Scheme. So here uh, I'd like to mention so that is the so. There are at least twenty two thousand canards 
that is a horizontal conduit wells in Iran even now supplying at least 35 percent of the water requirement of uh, Iran. So, you can uh, imagine how important it is and added to that is say that is the in 1804 the there was groundwater development through a 500 meter deep uh, tube well or say bore well around uh, Kolkata in India. So, there was a reported ok and uh, so, in 1936 Ganga Valley State Tubal Irrigation Scheme was launched in UP with uh, 1500 deep tube wells. Of course, there have been uh, parallelly there have been many developments in the western world also and uh, so obviously, can it all shows how important is the the ground water development. And here let me also show you an example of a horizontal well and as you can see here there is an aquifer with water table here and uh, that is there is a, a, a sloping uh, side. And uh, so, this aquifer is bounded by an impervious barrier and then say some uh, rock formations here. And so, through this, so there is a this horizontal well and uh, of course, so the uh, so depending upon the uh, the water table. So, this uh, the, we can ground water can be uh, harnessed to this uh, horizontal well. So, now let us come to the that is the ground water in uh, hydrologic cycle. So, here I would like to which is also known as the water cycle and uh, here. So, this is a schematic diagram and as you can see. So, this is the the ground surface 
and uh, so this is a uh, surface water body such as a lake or a river and uh, so this is the ground water table which represents the level of the saturated ground water which uh, also joins the sea or ocean and uh, here so there is a uh, uh, there is a evaporation from the ocean surface from the land surface through evapotranspiration as well as from the surface of uh, surface water body such as a lake or river as well as through these plants and then so all this evaporated water so it gets uh, accumulated in the clouds which are formed here and then so this clouds they move and then so there will be a cloud condensation and then there will be precipitation which is which may be either in solid form through sn uh, snowfall or hailstorm or uh, whatever and so this precipitated uh, water it will percolate through the ground surface and uh, eventually it will form uh, so what are known as the aquifers which are the water bearing strata and of course here there is a bedrock also and then so there are also among the aquifers there are uh, confined as well as unconfined aquifers and then so there is uh, so these uh, confined aquifers which are at the deeper depths so they get their water from this uh, deep percolation so here so this is a uh, deep percolation and then so this is the shallow or the top uh, or uh, the water table aquifer is also known as the unconfined aquifer okay and uh, so now coming to this uh, uh, the hydrologic cycle we know that so quantitatively so uh, we can represent the same thing that is a hydrologic cycle so here we can say this is a so this is the clouds and uh, here so this is the atmospheric uh, segment of the hydrologic cycle and then so here there is uh, also so there is a uh, this is a uh, evaporation and uh, evapotranspiration and then uh, here so this is a uh, precipitation okay and then so there is a so this is the surface runoff and then so there will be infiltration and then so here there will be so this is the groundwater table and uh, so here this is the the ground surface so this is the surface water body and then here we can say this is a sea or ocean okay so essentially so this is a cycle and uh, in this case now let let me explain you the the various uh, quantities involved here and as you can see so this sea or ocean so this represents almost say 96 percent of uh, water by volume and of course so here there are uh, these uh, so these are the mountain ice caps and of course so here there is a uh, also this is a uh, so this is the ground water okay in this uh, confined as well as unconfined aquifers so here i would like to so this i would like to so this is the unconfined that is water table 
aquifer at the top and here. So, this is the just a schematically I am showing one this one. So, this is the confined aquifer at the bottom below that. So, this is the hard rock here. So, like this and as I was mentioning, so this uh, sea or ocean water represents say 96 percent of the water by volume. So, the only the remaining nearly 3 to 4 percent is uh, the fresh water and uh, as you can show, let me show you here. And uh, so, this is the, the brackish or saline or other water which represents say uh, almost say uh, 97 and half percent of the total volume of water on earth and only this uh, 2 and half percent is uh, fresh water. And uh, of course, this 97 and half percent we cannot use it for uh, our uh, uh, the uh, to maintain the metabolic activity of uh, human beings, animals and plants. And this 2 and half percent of uh, water and is uh, out of this, so nearly 70 percent is stored in the polar ice and uh, glaciers. And then so this uh, 30 percent is uh, stored in uh, ground water. And of course, very little say one fourth of a percent uh, of fresh water is available in the surface water bodies. And uh, here and this, uh, so therefore, as one as uh, we can see, so this polar ice or uh, glaciers, they are available only in the cold regions or uh, high mountainous regions, whereas ground water is available almost uh, everywhere, the fresh ground water. So, and uh, here, so this fresh ground water up to say 1 kilometer depth. So, it is uh, nearly half of that one and then below 1 kilometer depth. So, it is uh, the remaining half and then of course, very small percent of that is a soil moisture. So, here, so this uh, as you can see this uh, um, hydrologic cycle. So, the there is a significant amount of earth uh, one let me go back to you again this. Uh, hydrologic cycle. So, although the entire water, the global water volume is uh, of the order of uh, say around uh, uh, 1400 uh, million uh, uh, that is kilometer cube. So, out of that, so nearly 96 say 96 to 97 percent is uh, the brackish or uh, salt water or marine water. So, therefore, so this uh, as you can see this uh, this 97 percent of water is useless. So, it is only the remaining say 2 to 3 percent of uh, water, 2 and a half percent of water. So, out of this, so one third of that is uh, available in ground water and this ground water is available in uh, say almost all the regions rather than the, the mountain ice caps. So, the mountain ice caps are available only in the mountainous regions or the polar regions. Whereas, this ground water is the fresh ground water is practically available everywhere. So, therefore, how important it is uh, to uh, that is uh, manage this ground water to maintain its uh, uh, this one supply and demand and uh, so that this uh, water table and uh, as you can see here. So, this water table so, it should be at the reasonable depth below the ground. It should not be too deep, it should not be too shallow. So, if it is too shallow, then it may create uh, water logging or uh, that is uh, uh, drainage and water logging problems. And if it is too deep, then this extracting of this uh, ground water will require lot of energy, lot of costs. Many times uh, these days, we have the uh, uh, this uh, high capacity pumps which are used to extract uh, ground water 
uh, like uh, multi stage submersible pumps and uh, so on. So, they are used for extracting ground water through these uh, wells. Okay. And so, therefore, to make it technically as well as economically uh, sustainable as well as uh, uh, ecologically sustainable, we need to maintain a balance between the ground water uh, uh, availability, ground water supply and demand. So, by so that we can maintain the depth of the water table, a healthy depth of the water table which is neither too shallow nor too deep and we can also maintain the uh, balance between the ground water supply and uh, this uh, ground water demand. So, thereby, so we can provide the uh, water security in the form of uh, fre fresh ground water which is practically available everywhere in the nearly 29 percent of the, uh, the land surface on uh, earth. Uh, on the other hand, so this uh, uh, at the same time, so this uh, the, the recent uh, this, uh, climate change and uh, associated impact. So, they are also affecting the this one. So, that is uh, uh, they are affecting the S1. And so, these climate change impacts are uh, uh, causing the mountain caps to the uh, polar ice as well as glaciers. Of course, here let me also write uh, here this is a uh, glaciers the melting of uh, glaciers and polar ice and uh, so therefore, it is uh, extremely important uh, to see that. So, the uh, water which has uh, melted because of the climate change and uh, the global warming effect. So, is uh, stored in the form of uh, uh, ground water and uh, this one. So, in the next uh, one lecture, we will see the other uh, uh, aspects of uh, so this. Thank you.